Hey folks, this is Gutsy here bringing you day four of the main event recap of TI8. Today was a very, I'd say the most boring day. So day one was pretty intense. Day two was a little meh. Day three was very intense. And today, day four, I'd say is definitely the most boring day. Um, we started off with Secret versus VGJ Storm. Um, or no, sorry, Optic versus Virtus Pro, my bad. And, uh, or was it VGJ Secret? I can't remember which one was first, but let's just say Optic VP. I'm pretty sure that was first. And uh, Optic, they won game one. It was pretty pretty convincing. They did Huskar Cheese. Um, and that's, I thought that was really clever of PPD because no one's like their best player. Sometimes it's Pasha. You usually don't see Ramses and them standing out anymore. Um, they're all amazing players in general, like Roger and everything, but it's usually no one. He's the one you gotta watch out for. So when you pick Huskar mid, you shut down everything that mid one is good at. And he's good at dealing with ganks, uh, aggroing, last hitting, all that stuff. Just abusing mid. He's just He was built to murder mid. So when you put a Huskar against him, he's gonna suck. So it was a cheese Huskar. And, you know, he was a DK at level 4 in the jungle. So they just lost that game. It got way too out of control. Optic also got the clinks. Game 2, though, Virtus Pro won. Optic had, in my opinion, a very poor draft. It was pretty bad. Um, I think VP outdrafted them very hard. And uh, they just they didn't perform at all. It was, it was kind of weird because like, the casters in Twitch chat, mind you, Twitch chat is never something to consider. The, it, it was like they thought Optic was winning, but I get it. They had the Alchemist, but Optic was like... I can't remember exactly. I think they're like 20 kills behind at one point. Yeah, and they still had towers up. But, I mean, that's a very clear indicator they're not winning. It was pretty early in the game, too. So, um, I was like, what's wrong with these people? They're not going to win. And and then they didn't. And they just kind of got steamrolled. There's one point Virtus Pro threw, but Optic used every buyback. Like, and all Virtus Pro has to do is kill them and then just run to the base and kill it. And that's exactly what happened. So I was very surprised. It, it kind of felt like I was the only one who knew that. And then game three, the draft from Optic was a bit better, but it was still pretty bad. I feel like a lot of the drafts that are happening, especially today, were just mimics of yesterday. And there wasn't too much innovation coming out except for EG. I'll get to that later on. But like... It just felt so forced. Nothing was unique in a way. And that's very unlike PPD. He's very... I find he's really good. Like that game one draft, that was really good. I thought he was just going to deliver that the whole series. But game three was just really bad. Like they... It just went downhill. The moral was just gone. It's kind of like what I thought would happen to OG yesterday, but it happened to Optic today. And, you know, I wish... PBD was more fond of Enigma. He did do it a few times. Uh, who played it? 33 or Zai or whatever. But I feel Enigma is one of those heroes that you really can't go wrong on. He, If you ever do have a bad game, he's always there for you. And when you pick Enigma, you're picking him because you're probably going to sacrifice a bit in the lane, which could snowball out of control to a point where he's useless and you do lose, but I find that's so rare that it's worth picking up an Enigma, and especially games like these, if you want to just guarantee you're still going to be in TI. And I think PPD probably should have did that. Um, but that's my opinion. VGJ Storm Secret, that was uh, that was actually okay-ish. Um, Puppy who Puppy really drafted them against them very hard. And it wasn't like super outdrafts or anything, but VGJ Storm, they tried some new stuff. The one game, I think it was game two, it almost looked like VGJ Storm was going to win with their Medusa, but there was just a few key mistakes, and uh, they just unfortunately slipped through the cracks. Probably mostly inexperience, I think, is why they lost. 
I think if they had more experience, they would have won that game too because Secret shouldn't have been in that position. But they just did the right calls and it screwed them over. A lot of people criticize snaking for a toss he did on his 1 HP Resolution Medusa who had a rapier. The game was already over at that point and Resolution was probably going to die from Yapsaur's... Uh, I think he had astral spirit off cool coming off cooldown so he was dead no matter what and even if he lived they were like they were done there was no way they were going to win that game at that point so don't know why people are bothering i think snaking just did that just as like a oh, a big f you kind of thing i don't know um because it was kind of like the medusa no damage build and i i understand that you need damage on medusa it's it's whatever that was a that was a decent series i like seeing the coddle i like the mss on Dark Willow, he had a lot of impact. Ace, Ace has been performing really po poorly this tournament. He had the the first game was the Meepo, and that was solid. I, I've said that a lot throughout the series. There's some decent times where they could have picked Meepo, and I'm like, you should pick him. Because even if Ace does bad on Meepo, it's such a comfort here for him. He's going to have a decent impact regardless. Whereas when Ace does bad on, like, uh, Terrorblade, for example, like, there were some very bad plays. Like, he ran into a Bramble Maze he shouldn't have it, where he could have got a Sunder off, and because of that, he died. Like, you can't be doing that at TI. I've seen now, I think, the last three series, he's done something similar. So, And I really like Ace as a player. I When they drafted him, I thought he was, it was, like, a much better than MP, which I liked MP, but I thought Puppy made a very good move. But he is he's choking. Ace is choking this tournament. Um, unless he gets Arc Warden or Meepo, it's not... You can notice it. So the fact that they're still going strong is nice, but when they fight Liquid tomorrow, no choke. So if I was Puppy, I'd try my absolute damnedest to get that Arc Warden or Meepo on Ace. Big time. Otherwise, if you just do a regular carry, you might it might cost you the series. Because I've, I've lost faith in Ace at this point. He's not horrible, but it's just... He's making some mistakes he definitely shouldn't be. And Fada too. Fada's kind of slipping a bit. But he's 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 okay. He he did much better this series than yesterday. And then you had um, EG versus VP. That was... VP choked very hard. And I didn't like their drafts either. The, one, the game 2 draft was a little bit better. You know, EG did the Alk when Ursa was already on the field. And VP is versatile with players, so they just switched it up. Um, the Ursa did really well, but Alk comes online no matter what. You know, it's kind of like with Ace on his Meepo and Arc Warden. He, he, he's going to have impact whether you shut him down or not. And Sumail's just that kind of person. You know that when they pick that Alk, they know that they're giving up laning phase. So they didn't crush, but v Virtus Pro did very good at dominating that lane and causing Sumail problems, but when he's still getting a 15-minute Radiance, like, it's it's not good. So, and they just went, they went with picks that just aren't Virtus Pro heroes. They, they were aggressive heroes, but they're like the meta one. It was back to that Force thing when I was talking about Optic. It's like you're just picking based off what other people are picking more so than what you are doing just because it's good. Uh, for example, the OG series, they didn't do that, and look where it got them. Top three. They did new picks and just picks that necessarily like Centaur and stuff. You just, you don't see that with all the other teams, but they did it because, and you know, they got that Arc Warden and Wisp Spectre. I know Spectre and Wisp are still pretty big, but you usually don't see that combo. So <clears throat> like, that's what I want, wanted VP to do an Optic and they just didn't. So the they lose right like you need to pick what you what you've been doing all year I, it's more upsetting with virtus pro than optic because virtus pro has been performing all year and every ti they choke and this one i'm like oh you know they can't they they be doing so well and they did it and that's the main reason so eg though you have to give them credit uh there were some really good plays mostly sumail's just 
so good. RTZ kind of is slipping a bit this tournament. I think it's just not a good carry tournament. The only carry really stands out of the teams that are currently in the meta is um, not even Anna. Anna's fallen off. Maybe Ame. Maybe Ame. I don't, I don't see any other teams. It just feels like all their carries are doing really poorly. It's just, I think it's the meta. It's just not a friendly carry meta, that's all. Because it's 2-1-2, so it's harder. You know, there's no farm. Games don't go beyond 60 minutes, stuff like that. So tomorrow will be Liquid and Secret to see who fights EG. I think Liquid's going to win it, mostly because I'm worried about Ace and Fada. Poppy's also not been doing too well. He had a really nice Chen game though yesterday, so that kind of regained my faith. But I feel like Secret every game, I mentioned this in my previous one, is just mid one, mostly. And then you have the odd nice play from Yap Source. So I think even though Liquid got like spanked by LGD, they're going to beat Secret. And I think that if they fight EG, Liquid will beat EG. I think if Secret magically somehow beats Liquid though, they will lose to EG. And then you'll have EG in the next round. LGD OG. I really want to go with OG, but I just the way LGD spanked e, uh, Liquid, and the way um, like the well Virtus Pro wasn't surprising. It was the Liquid spanking, but also because I voted for LGD to win the whole tournament. I think LGD is going to beat OG, and we'll probably have either an EG or a Liquid rematch, maybe a secret. Most likely it'll be, I'm hoping it'll be Liquid OG. That way I like both teams, so either of them will get to the grand final. Um, preferably Liquid. I think Liquid out of OG will have the better chance of beating LGD in the grand final compared to OG, if OG gets there a second time. But who knows, you know, second time for both teams if that's the scenario, so... Maybe OG could do the same thing. They they beat EG, so... I would really like to see OG-EG fight, but I'm worried that EG would learn, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow OG to get a win, and then you'd have EG grand fighter, so... You kind of know what I want to happen when, and what I don't want. I basically don't want EG. I don't really want Secret just with the way they're playing. I want a Liquid, OG, or LGD. Um, so we'll see. Other things, the Japan video was really cool. It reminded me of my current scenario. I did a comment on YouTube about it. There used to be a small tournament in my area. It grew big, got sponsors, Riot got involved. And I hope saying that word doesn't screw this YouTube video because then I'll have to redo it. Um, and then it, it, like there, it had multiple games and then the Dota one basically got removed in simple format because of the impact league had on it more so it was the organization of the tournament i could have joined that org i declined the offer though because it, it was school involved i don't want to i'm done when i'm done school i'm done so the dota faction of the tournament died off as the actual whole tournament itself grew big and that that japan video the mara one that was on ti today reminded me of that because Mara you know there's no money in the prize pool it's done like the the prize is food and everything but he does it because it keeps the small dota scene in Japan going and the people that have fun that are part of that small scene he does it for them too so that they can continue to have fun whereas in my scenario they took it away from me and I lost out on a yearly thing that I had fun with I think it was like twice a year at one point you know, I really enjoyed that. That was actually something I looked forward to every year. I'm not going to get too much into my personal life, but one thing now is TI. And, you know, before it used to be TI and those Dota tournaments, but now they're gone. So, uh, yeah, so that was nice to watch. The AI match versus the Chinese was nothing new really presented to the table. Uh, is basically what happened last time. So I wish they did something a little newer with that. Um, then they had the all-star match. That was really poor, I think. I get that it's tedious and long, and sometimes it's over at five minutes, and pros don't want to keep going on, but from a spectator standpoint, seeing them just GG 
not even halfway through it and then it's just over and done is kind of dumb and they they said oh it's like we want people to go home it was like i think 9 or 10 p.m in west coast so it wasn't even that late really uh yeah not not the greatest all-star match but whatever i'm not i'm not mad i'm not complaining today was a good day it just compared to the other three it paled in comparison i think the highlight of the whole day the entire whole day was the japanese segment that was basically the highlight for me because the games themselves nothing really stood out much so if i had to pick games that stood out or a series i'd say vgj storm secret if i had to pick a game it'd be optics first game that was really cool uh, so yeah, and uh, anything else I'll add in the description. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow.